Hi, in this episode I'm going to take a quick look at how you create atlases in QGIS. So, uh, to start with, I'm using a web map service in the background that I've uh, just made grayscale uh, in the settings, so it isn't that obvious, and we can focus on uh, other data that I'm adding. Uh, the first atlas I'm going to create is uh, based on a, a current layer or a layer that I'm having. So. I have a layer here with municipalities in Sweden and uh, that one I'm going to use and it has a lot of information as well but uh, basically I'm interested in this column with the names of the municipalities. So to create um, an atlas, let's see, wait with that one, let's make the simple one. Uh, you go into the layout, and first of all, we need to have a, a map. So just put a map like that, give it a frame so we can see it, and uh, maybe a title as well. We don't need to go overboard with this, like that, perhaps. Okay, now we have the starting point for a map layout and an atlas. But to use the atlas, we first of all need to define how the atlas is built up. And that we have in um, the atlas settings. You can reach through the menu or through the toolbar. You have a button for atlas settings and it will generate a a panel like this. It can dock anywhere. So first of all we need to tell QGIS that we will want to generate an atlas. And uh, every atlas is based on a coverage layer. And in this case I want to have a, um, a page in my atlas for each municipality in Sweden. So I'm going to use that as a coverage layer. Uh, if I don't want to view this layer, have it visible, I can just make it a hidden coverage layer. Um, if I want to have names for my pages, I can choose an attribute in the attribute table for uh, the coverage layer. Uh, so in this case I'm using the name attribute. Uh, and if I don't want to have all objects as a single page, I can create filters and I can sort by name, for instance. That could be nice. Easier to find. Uh, and if I don't want to create a single file as export, I can remove this checkbox right here. Uh, for instance, if you create a PDF export of an atlas, it will be one PDF with a lot of pages. But there may be situations where you want one PDF for each page. And then you just remove this. And then you can um, create a custom name for each page as well. I'm not going to use this right now, so I don't do any changes. Okay, now we have defined how the atlas uh, should be generated, and how many pages there are, and so on. Uh, it, we'll get back to that. Uh, next thing is that we need to tell the layout what is going to change between pages. And in this case, it is the map. So we go to item properties. And we have a checkbox here that says controlled by Atlas. So we check that. And depending on um, what type of geometry the uh, coverage layer has, uh, you get different options here. For a point layer, for instance, you only get fixed scale. 
but since this is a polygon layer, uh, we get a margin around feature that we can set or at a predefined scale. Uh, but uh, margin 10%, that's okay. And that's it. Now we have our atlas. Uh, but to view it, we need to activate it. And uh, that we do in uh, the with this button, preview atlas. And then we have uh, one page for each object in the coverage layer. And so if I want to go to Stockholm, for instance, I can select this page and it will jump to Stockholm municipality. Uh, let's add a scale text. Like that. Just to have a sense of scale. Um, I may also want to have a title that changes but depending on what municipality it is. And that's also quite easy to do. So, since uh, we set the page name for the atlas to an attribute, I can use that in uh, an expression. So if you just type atlas, you get a lot of variables that are connected to the atlas. And one of them is page name. Like that. So now when I go to another, let's take Malmö. Where do we have Malmö? There. Like that. This is as simple as you can create a map book and uh, when you export it, you can export it as a PDF, for instance, and it will create a lot of pages in this case, so I won't do it, but... Uh, uh, and, or you can print it on paper. Uh, so this is the, the simplest way of creating a map book, but it can be much more advanced. Uh, my second example, uh, I will create a map book that is not um, based on a current layer. Uh, so I will need to create my coverage layer. Uh, so I have here a layer with uh, rivers. Oops. Just delete that. Uh, in Sweden. And I'm interested in uh, one particular river. So let's open the attribute table for that one by pressing F6. Here we go. Branch name should be branch name, yes. So I need to change the query to branch name. And the river I'm interested in is called Lagan. Let's test this. Yes. Okay, here we go. Um, this river, I want to create a map book or an atlas over the f this river flow. And uh, that can't be done just by using this as a coverage layer. I need to create my coverage layer first. Uh, and I will do that by um, generating polygons that uh, represent each page. Uh, and then I've, first, I need to know the extent of the map on each page. 
So the first thing I need to do is create my layout. Uh, let's see. And uh, here I have created a layout that I want to have. Uh, and actually that was pretty spot on for my index map. Okay, uh, I will use a fixed scale for this and I will not change this layout uh, from now on. Uh, I can do changes in the layout other than the size of the map, but in order to uh, generate exact coverage for each page, I, I, I can't change this uh, map frame now. So I need to use the layout that I'm satisfied with, and that's this. And uh, next thing I need to find out how wide and how tall this map frame is in uh, map units. And in my case, case it's meters. Uh, I've already calculated this and I, I use the x max and x min uh, values and y max and y min values to calculate the extent. And if I want an exact, uh, what do you call it? If the pages, if you want an exact uh, lineup between the pages, you use these exact values. Uh, but if you want some overlap, you uh, use a lower value. So I will probably use 18,000 for the x value and uh, 19,000 for the y value. So let's go back to QGIS. To do this, I'm going to use a process toolbox that creates a grid. So create grid. Uh, and it will be a polygon, a rectangle polygon. Uh, the extent will be this layer. So I can just Select it, and that will generate the uh, X and Y min max coverage. And now I need to put in the spacing between uh, the polygons, and that is my values I've calculated. So horizontal, that's X, that's 18,000. And vertical, that's Y, that's 19,000. Like that. And uh, I'm quite satisfied to create a temporary layer for now because I will need to edit the result. Like that. So let's put that behind. And make it of another color so it's more visible. Like that. Okay, uh, the first thing I need to do, I think, is to see if I can um, edit this layer and move the polygons so I, uh, so it will generate as few uh, polygons as possible. And I, I want this uh, lower left uh, page to uh, be more center in the page, uh, to be more visible. I, I don't really care about the top ones, but uh, the the outflow into the ocean, I want that to be m more in the center than it is right now. So I'll just select all polygons, use the move tool, move feature tool, and uh, grab that. And let's see. If I put it there, what happens? 
can't still get that one. That I would like to avoid. This may be a problem. I think I'll be quite happy with this one. Okay, now I can just select the polygons that I will not use. So, like this. Those polygons that are marked in yellow right now uh, does not have a coverage for the river, so those are not necessary for my uh, purpose, so I can just delete those. Uh, save my edits. Uh, now I wish also to control the page numbers, in what order the, the pages are presented in the atlas. And for that I need to create a uh, a new uh, attribute. Call that page number integer. Okay. And uh, this should be my first one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, let's say eleven. And then we have thirteen and twelve. Like that. Uh, you can add a lot more attributes if you want to use uh, more information in your um, in your pages and in your layout. Uh, you could, for instance, have a, a URL to an image for each page and use that as a source for uh, an image in the layout. Uh, so the possibilities are uh, almost endless. So save my edits and stop editing. And uh, I think I'm done here. Uh, I just want to style this for later. Like that, and add a label. That's fine. Okay. Now I'm switching to my pre-existing uh, layout. And if we look at my overview map, we can see the, the coverage right here with the page numbers. And um, I'll change that quickly. Bold. Yeah, that's okay. And uh, I also want to create, 
create some themes. So I'll create a theme for the index map. And I will create a theme for the main map. And we'll create a geometry generator. I guess that's fine. So, but I need to uh, save that as uh, theme main. Like that, and when I switch back to index, it looks like that. And main, like that. Okay. Uh, now I can connect the two maps to the different themes. So, my index map should follow the index theme, and my main map should follow the main theme. Okay. Atlas. Generate Atlas. Yes. And I will use my grid layer. I haven't saved, but anyway. Uh, it sh should not be hidden, because then it will disappear from my index. The page name could be page number. Um, but I will expand on that. So I will call it like that. And we will sort by page number. Okay. Now I need to activate the Atlas control for my main map. And uh, I will have that at a fixed scale. Because that is how I have set it up. And uh, I th also need to change that one to Atlas page name, like that. Remove that. Okay. And I think that's all. So let's activate the preview of the, the Atlas. There we have it, page one with the river flow. Oh, I forgot one thing. I want to use an uh, overview. So let's just add the main map as an overview, like that. Okay, page one, page two, page three, and so on. So this is a way you can uh, create atlases when you don't have a prepared coverage layer and you need to create one your, yourself. Uh, let's export this as a PDF as well, see how it turns out. Remember, now you need to <laughs> export all pages, so probably will take a bit of time. I wonder why it's 13 pages. Interesting. Was it really 13? Yeah, it was. 
anyway, here we go. Let's see, logon, 27 megabytes. Page one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that works. So that's it. That was all I uh, wanted to show you. And uh, I hope you can use this when you are creating your own atlases and uh, you can absolutely expand on this it's not only the page name that is possible to use you can use any attributes in the cover coverage layer um, so if you for instance as i mentioned earlier create a image the image source can be uh, a an attribute from the uh, table or you can uh, create an expression based on the fields in the coverage layer uh, it's a bit more complex but it's quite doable if you want to create more advanced atlases so that is all for this time see you next time